Okay, so let's look at El Gamo public key encryption. So in this case, we'll use the Go programming language and we'll implement a real life El Gamo public key encryption uh, system. So the three main ways that we typically use public key encryption are with RSA. So with RSA, we create a modulus, which is two prime numbers multiplied together. The difficulty of this is to be able to factorize n back into the prime numbers p and q. For elliptic curve cryptography, we use an elliptic curve and then we take a point and then we multiply that point or we add that point n times. So we might have a point g here, a generator point, and then we find another point on the elliptic curve. A third method is El Gamo, and this is a method that uses discrete logarithms to create public key encryption. So what is public key encryption? Well, if we draw a little green key, which is our private key, and our blue key as our public key. So Bob has a private and a public key. So he distributes his public key and keeps his private key uh, secure. The two main places that uh, we use uh, uh, public key encryption is to sign for something. So we might have some data. We can then encrypt that data with our private key. And that gives us a signature. Then, Alice can uh, decrypt that signature with Bob's public key and check the data. So in this way, Bob can prove his identity with the signing key, his private key. We all can also use it if we generate a symmetric key and we want to pass it to Alice. In this case, uh, uh, Bob would encrypt with Alice's public key and then Alice would decrypt with her private key to be able to get the same shared key. So those are the main uh, areas that we look to uh, use public key encryption. So what we have with uh, with our El Gamo method is that we start off with uh, two values, a G value, a generator value, and a P value, a prime number. So we define what's called a finite field. So the values that we have are between zero and P minus one. So the raw operations that we have are all done mod P. And the good thing with finite fields is that uh, we can still perform our normal mathematical operations within the finite field and they'll still work. So that uh, A times B is uh, the same as A mod P times B mod P and so on. So all our, oper all our operations are still valid within inside our finite field because the numbers that we're going to have are very can be very large. So Bob initially creates a private key, x, that's a random uh, value. Bob then calculates a y value, which is g, the generator point, uh, the generator value to the power of x mod p. So his private key, his public key, then becomes g, o, y, g, and p. And his private key is x. Then he sends this to Alice, and then Alice takes the message and calculates an A value. So A is the G. She creates a random number for uh, the message. It doesn't matter what that random number is. And then takes G to the power of K mod P, and that becomes the A value of the cipher. Then she'll take uh, the y value that Bob passed as part of his public key raises it to the power of x of k and then multiplies that by m and again takes mod p. 
So the cipher of the message is A and B. When Bob receives this, he takes B and then divides it by A to the power of his private key X and then takes mod P and hopefully he'll be able to recover the message that Alice sent. So how does this work? Well, if we do a bit of the maths, so B is actually Y to the power of K times M and A to the power of X is actually A is G to the power of um, K uh, as we saw here and B is this value here and so we end up with this here again it's mod P and from here uh, the Y value is G to the power of G to the power of X to the power of K and then because of that uh, with discrete logs x to the power a to the power of x to the power of y is equal to a to the power of x y so then we end up with this g to the power of x k divided by g to the power of x k times m they cancel out and we end up with the message and that's the way that the algamo method works so let's see this in code. So we'll start off with our random value and we'll just take a random value of 10. In this case, we create G and P and I'll show you that in a little minute, how we generate that with a certain number of bits. So typically it's 512, 768, 1024, 2048 bits. The longer the G and the P, and the G value is, the more secure it will actually be. So roughly the security needs to be more than 768, probably looking at 1024 or 2048. We then create our private key, which is a G, P and X value. From here, we can create the Y value, which is a G, to the power of x mod p. That will give us our value of y. So here are some g values. So I've taken these from the Fehelman uh, groups. So 512 bit. Uh, this is a, a typical, or this is a, a prime number and a g value used for uh, Diffie Hellman. This is 768, and this is 1024. So you can see here, these are the prime number, this is the prime number, and the G value defined in hex, we then convert that into a big integer. Luckily, uh, Go, the Go language can uh, easily cope with uh, big integers. So then for the encryption function, just as we've seen before, uh, so we're going to generate an A and a B value. So we take the value of G. So G is, is uh, here. So this is the A value calculation here. So it's G to the power of K and then mod P. So the value of K is taken randomly between 0 and P minus 1. And then we'll go calculate this part here. So the first part here is y to the power of k. So it's this part, mod p. And then we're going to multiply that by the message. So that's that part there. It's this part. And then we're going to take mod p at the very end. And then we'll return the values of a and b from the function. Okay, so it's nice and simple. Two values are returned, A and B. We pass in the message and we'll get our two ciphers. To then decrypt, uh, as we saw before, it's B divided by A to the power of X mod P. So this part here is A to the power of X. So that's that part in there. And mod P. We then take one over that, or the inverse mod, which is this part here. So this part takes a to the power of x, 
as a divisor, makes it now into a multiplier. We'll then multiply this by a b to get there. And again, we'll take our mod p and we'll return back uh, some bytes. We'll convert that those bytes back into a message and hopefully we'll get our message back again. So here's a sample run with 512 bit prime uh, numbers. So there's the Y value, our G value, and our prime number that we're using. There's the, 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 pub, the public key. And I'm just using a very small value of X. You, obviously you wouldn't use so such a small value, but just to keep it simple, I've just used 42. And then we end up with an A and a B value. And then hopefully at the end, we'll end up with uh, a decrypted value. So I'll show you this running in code. Okay, so I'm just using this code here. So just the little code snippets that I saw that I showed before. Uh, and what we'll do is that we'll encrypt a message and we'll take a private key. Let's go for 611. Um, we'll take a prime number of 768 and there it's there. Okay, so as we increase our prime numbers, obviously the, the values that we get are larger and become more secure. But we should be able to pick any uh, pub private key and it should actually work. Obviously, the larger the value they get, just take a little bit longer to actually do it. Uh, but you can see uh, there, it still works uh, for our decryption there. Okay, so that's showing you how you use Go, the Go language, a great uh, uh, language to use because you can compile it and how you can implement uh, LGAML public key encryption.